Hey, this is YBR with BeamNG Drive, and today we're going to do some underride guard crash testing, which means we take a truck with a trailer and slam a lot of cars into the back of it and see what happens. A more detailed description is this piece of metal right here is basically what the underride guard is. It is a piece of metal that's attached to the back of a truck, so if a pedestrian vehicle rear ends a big rig, they are more likely to be able to survive the impact. And it works quite simply. So if this piece of metal was not here, and you were to accidentally rear end a big rig like this with a pedestrian vehicle, the corner of this sits so high that it would basically go right over your hood, straight through your windshield, and your face becomes the crumple zone, which would lead to severe injury if not death in most cases. So the underride guard makes it where if you hit the back of a big rig, it actually hits the front of your car, and your car is able to do all the crumple zone magic it does to hopefully keep you alive in case of an impact. So that is what we're going to be testing. And the first thing we're going to do is just drive the big rig uh, a while ahead of the other truck and then we have room to slam into him. So we'll park him about, uh, let's say right here. And the speed for these crashes aren't going to be super consistent or anything like that. It's going to be like, you know, this dude is driving and then he sees a truck in front of him and he slams on his brakes at a high speed. If anything interesting happens I'll lower the speed to see kind of what speed is needed for something interesting to happen so let's say he's driving along at the freeway at freeway speeds and then oh no so he slams on his brakes trying to not hit this truck and he still hits it of course because this car doesn't have a 20 foot 60 to 0 braking or anything like that so you hit him and luckily the driver in here could probably survive that because there's no real cabin intrusions or anything like that Yes, his organs would have been mixed around a lot from the impact, but it's probably survivable because it wasn't an instantaneous stop. As you saw, the big rig did move forward when he collided into him, which made the impact a lot less severe. So now let's use a car that's less likely to make out so good. We'll use the, come on, car selector, there we go, the Savetta Bolide, which sits so low to the ground, I'm pretty sure it'll just, get wrecked and you're going to get your head chopped off and it's going to be terrible, terrible, terrible. And I'm picking the 390 GTR because I want the one that sits as low as possible. I don't remember if there's a difference between the suspensions, but I'm assuming the faster one would be lower to the ground. So let's say you're getting, you're driving all along, going the speed limit, and then, oh no! So you slam on your brakes and this is going to go terribly. I'm going to get some hundred times slow-mo on this. So you see, right under the underride guard, which is supposed to stop something like this from happening, and then boom! That thing is going straight through your head. Looking at it in super slow-mo, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's bad. You might just barely not have that thing cutting your head off, but you're going to at least slam your head into that piece of metal on impact, which will probably break your skull or something, and that's, that's, that's violent, violent death. It's not like the truck where the impact had the crumple zone slowing it down and then the truck kind of moved forward. This one, well, the truck did move forward, but there was no crumple zones to slow it down. And instead of hitting the steering wheel, which is at least padded, you hit a big giant chunk of metal with your head, which is not good for your face. So that, probably death. And that basically shows you the, what an underride guard is supposed to stop. Unfortunately, a bolide sits so low, it isn't able to do that. But a nor if it wasn't for the underride guard, that's what a normal car would do when they rear-ended uh, a big rig like this one. So it's actually a really good demonstration of the two different kinds of cars you have which and how they would react and stuff. Or the two different, like what an underride guard is and all that. So let's go ahead and try another vehicle. We'll try another pretty low one because I think it's more interesting with you do it when you do a low one. So let's try the Covet, which is just a basic economy car. It may or may not uh, end up under the truck. I'm not sure, honestly. So we'll find out. Oh, come on. Get, go, 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 go. I got to jiggle it. It's always funny when you got to jiggle the car. So I can get this free. You just watch. So same idea. Driving along and then slamming on your brakes really late in this car because they were busy doing some, I don't know what they were doing. They were being distracted and we're coming in it at an angle like this trying to avoid them or something. Just right under the guard, and again, it hits directly at the windshield, which that's going to be fatal again because you're doing the exact same thing that happened in the bolide. 
It just hits you right there and your head is crushed. That one actually crushed your head, it looks like. Where the other one at least might have had a chance to not crush it. This one looks like it got some crushing unless you had your seat really lean back all the way maybe. And then even then you would still bounce your head off of the metal and, you know, break your head open. So that is a failure for the underride guard because this car sits too low. Or maybe it's the underride guard sits too high. Because that was probably what would happen if I crashed into a truck, to be honest with my car, because my car sits pretty low and I'd probably die. That's not good. Let's try another normal car like the 200BX, see what that one does. And for this one, I'm going to use the Type L, which is just a fancier base version, if I remember correctly. No real performance difference that will be noticeable in this situation. And away we go. And this one, I'm going to go ahead and say this guy, he was really bad paying attention. He was super distracted and he didn't get to slow down at all. Just for variety, you know? So you see, he didn't slow down at all. He just slams right into the back of this thing. And the underwrite guard, oh, well. No, it's still getting into the cabin. It kind of like got stuck on the hood for a second, but then it tore the hood into the cabin to um, murder the driver with his own car instead of using murdering him with the guard. So again, that is a failure by that underwrite guard to keep you alive because it sits too high. You're getting smushed up with that. And I was going to use the uh, racing version because I thought it sat a little bit lower because I didn't think that one would do that too. But yeah, uh, this one is also a likely extreme injury, if not death, because of hitting your head on the hard parts just like the previous two. So that's brutal. And that one, the big rig didn't even roll that much. That was really unusual. So it got even more damage probably to this car, which caused it, it causes you to be even more likely to be severely injured. Right. Let's try a car that probably won't fail. Like the Grand Marshal sits higher up, I'm pretty sure. So it should actually be totally fine. We'll use the normal V8 edition, not the Sport, just in case the Sport sits lower. And this one, I think the underwrite guard should actually do its job on. So again, this guy, he's the same driver as before. He somehow lived to uh, die another day. See there, that one is the underwrite guard stopping the car in a way where the driver has a chance to survive. So we can speed it up just a little bit. So you see, cabin of the car, totally intact. No damage in there. Just the force of the impact that the driver has to deal with to survive, which means this is something you could probably survive because you're not going to get crushed by anything. You're just going to have your organs shifted about a lot. And I do mean a lot because that is like a 70 mile per hour crash because we didn't break it all. But since it wasn't an immediate stop, it should be survivable. So here's the question though. What if you were braking? So we're doing the exact same crash, but you're braking, which causes the front of the car to dip down. Does that mean if we braked, the car would dip below the trailer and then you would die if you braked? Let's find out. So right here, brakes, car's dipping, and oh my goodness, what an interesting conundrum you would have here. So, if you were driving this car behind this trailer and you slammed on your brakes, you would die. Definitely, because whenever the, the guard goes into the cabin, I mean, that's basically guaranteed death as far as I'm concerned for these tests. That's my simple to determine metric. So if you slow down, you're gonna kill yourself. If you slam into them without slowing down, you'll probably survive. That is one very unusual, unexpected thing. That one did at least hit the hood a little bit more where it didn't go into the uh, cabin as much as some others, but it did get really deep in here where I'm sure your head will still hit the guard and not anything soft. Like if there was an airbag, the guard would probably pop it and then you don't even have the support of an airbag to help your head. You just slam into it still. But that is really interesting that that happens. Same exact car, same exact distance to accelerate, so pretty much the same exact speed when you get to the truck, but slamming in your brake skills, yeah. Very unexpected. So let's go ahead and keep trying the stock vehicles. I want to get through all the stock ones. The next one will be the Moonhawk. And we'll get the V8 Sport. Well, yeah, V8 Sport's good. Let's use the automatic, actually. Just because I like automatic right now. I don't feel like doing shifting. Too much effort. 
And unfortunately, I don't think there's a way to remove just the underride guard on the truck. Um, so you can only test with it. Although it'd be awesome to be able to remove it, I don't think it's a feature. Maybe in a future version, though. All right, so here we go. Slamming on the brakes in this car. This is a big, fat American vehicle. This thing is totally going to hit the underride guard no matter what. And that means the driver will be okay. That one is definitely survivable under the right circumstances. Although this is an older car that doesn't have airbags, so you will still be slamming your head into the steering wheel, which doesn't look very soft. It looks like a pretty rough looking steering wheel. But you probably could survive that one. Next up, let's try something dumb, the pigeon. As long as we don't tip over, I'm pretty sure we'll die. If we tip over, it saves our lives. How ironic is that? And this one, it's going so slow, I'm just going to go full throttle into it. Yep. Wait, wait, is it going to go under? Oh! Kind of? Oh, wow, the pigeon is just tall enough. Oh, no. So the pigeon is just tall enough where the underwrite guard won't go into the cabin. Um, but the pigeon is a death trap. It is an absolute death trap where, like... I don't know. I mean, that looks so violent in the cabin. I guess you might have been able to survive it since there's no real intrusions into the cabin. But it just looked bad. Like, it looked like something was going to happen, but then nothing did. So my guess is, with the Pigeon, if you slam on the brakes, it's going to be worse for the car. Unless this front suspension is able to hold up under the stresses of braking a lot better than a normal one. Because it is so strange with... It only having one wheel and all. It might not be able to compress as much under normal braking, which might be beneficial. I don't know. Either way, let's figure it out right now. We're going to slam on the brakes, and that thing is staying flat. It's actually going to work. Yeah. So with the Pigeon, you actually do hit the brakes, and it's better. I thought for certain it would just ram into the underride guard, and you'd be totaled, but no. It stays really flat under braking. That is unexpected. All right, next stock car up is the Hirochi Sunburst. And I want it to be pretty low to the ground, so we're going to use the Sport RS version of the car. And I like a nice yellow color. Not spot new. Replace. Is the truck reset? Yep. All right, let's go. So for the first run, we're just going to do it driving without braking. And then on the next one, we will add the braking, because I'm pretty sure this one's going to be right on the edge of how low a car can be. So this is actually a really high-speed run. We're going into this thing at 75 miles per hour. And, oh, that's unusual like it didn't really hit the front of the car but it hit the hood which um is kind of hard to say what would have actually happened to the driver in this case it looks like the dash would have been taking out his legs or something but i don't think he would have been killed from the like hitting his head on the underride guard or anything of the truck i think the only thing that killed him is the fact that that like the dash came down and just crushed his legs it looks like that is a very unusual looking crash huh and then you know, like even the shape of the door and stuff is just strange i'm assuming then if i'm braking while i do that it'll just it'll just roll right under it and be fatal that's what my guess would be so let's see going really fast and then brakes hard on the brakes I'm going to try and slow so we can really see this one because this is an interesting one. So, hits the hood scoop right there and then dash comes down. Oh, well, oh, no, no, that is going under the truck this time. You see the difference? You brake, it's way more fatal. Although I was going faster into it, I think, even with braking. But still, you can see just how much damage it gets when you actually go under the truck. And again, the dash, though, just doing some weird things. And hood, I, I'm actually surprised it doesn't, like, go inside of the um, windshield or anything like that. It actually stays outside. But again, it's just so odd looking, this one. Very unusual. All right, next up is, is, come on, give me the vehicle selector, is the Vanster. That's the next normal vehicle, and we'll just do the normal basic Vanster. Alright, here we go. Come on, accelerate. 
So again, same strategy, full speed, then um, with braking if I think it'll be interesting. So here we go, just kind of coast it, get to 60 miles per hour or so. Yeah, this one's definitely going to hit the guard no matter what, because it's a nice big tall van. So all it has to worry about is the actual impact, and it doesn't have that big of an engine base, so there's not much crumple zone for this vehicle. So right there, there is some damage to the cabin, but I think, and I say think, that the driver shouldn't have too many issues surviving something like that still. I don't, I mean, it looks like his legs wouldn't have been crushed too bad or anything like that, so I think he'd be okay. Yeah. Um, next up, is that pretty much all the stock vehicles? Um, yeah. I, I probably missed one just because there's, you know, X number of vehicles and I think I did one and then I didn't, but I think that's most of them. So the next thing I want to do is actually go back into the bull light and do an interior crash because I think that'd be fun to do. So let's just do that real quickly. And I want one where I actually hit the guard. That's why I chose the bull light because it is the lowest car there is and it'll hit the guard no matter what I do. So here's one from the inside. I'm gonna do a hundred times slow mo so you can see every detail of the crash. We're going pretty fast into this thing, about 70 miles per hour. And I thought I was gonna hit by now. I guess we were a little farther away than I thought when I uh, enabled this. So here we go. Right over the hood and into the A pillars and into your head. Right there, that is where it kills you. And you really can't see too much in this scenario because it all kind of caved in. So I just speed up a bit. You can kind of see the outcome. And you see just how bad it was right there. Just terrible crashes, man. And I mean terrible as in that kills you crash. Alright, so let's go ahead and pull out a couple of modded vehicles. Like, uh, let's start with the Honda Prelude. And for this one, we'll go with the factory stock. Three. Why three? No real reason. Just three sounds like a good number. So it is an older car. So I'm not sure how it'll fare on this. That was kind of odd. The game kind of froze for a second. So what I was saying though is this is an older car so it sits kind of low. But it also has a big gap between the wheels and the fenders. Which means it will be interesting. I don't know if it'll go under it. If it'll crash right into it. I'm not sure. So let's see. Uh, pop it into 100 times slow mo. <laughs> the lights, poor lights, they just get chopped off. And it looks like just barely is this car saved by the height of the hood. If the hood was one inch less, I think it would have definitely been fatal. With this one, you have the force of the impact as always, but there's nothing to really crush the driver, so I would assume it might be survivable. That's good. And also, I'm making these assumptions based purely on the angle of the crash, not the speed. I should point that out. Like, the speed's irrelevant to me. It's just, how does it hit? So now we're going to do the same crash with some braking. So we're going to drive up, drive up, and this suspension should dip pretty significantly. There's the dip. I might have did that a little too late. We'll find out. And... I might have messed that up or the car might still just barely be tall enough to survive because that crash looked very similar to the last one. Very, uh, very, very close to not making it. I'm sure if I timed the braking perfectly right, it would work. Or another option is to just get the, the uh, street sleeper one, which I'm pretty sure is lowered, which means it will get wrecked. And I was looking to see if it said the year over here, and it doesn't. So I can't just say, oh, yes, the year was blah, 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 because I don't know for sure. I could look it up real easily. I mean, that's the thing. I just I can't think it off the top of my head. So anyways, lower car, stiffer suspension. So I don't know if the braking will do as much, but it should hit this thing, right? Oh, there's a nice braking. Oh, it's not lower, is it? Rain. I could have sworn it was. Either way, though, I was able to break in a way where um, the underride guard killed me. That is definite death. Like, the hood is all inside the car. And, yeah. Mm -mm. Not making it out of that one. Not exactly how I planned things to go, but hey. It got the outcome I was looking for. So I'll take it. 
All right, let's go to another modded car. How about, um, let's, you know, I, I like the cars that actually kill you. It look, it's a lot more interesting. So let's try something like the Sprinter. Get the automatic, and uh, white's nice. There's nothing wrong with a white car. Okay, it's red. Okay, it's black. Okay, it's red still. Come on, come on, get unstuck. I gotta unstuck it manually. Hold on. Okay, car unstuck. Let's go. So again, another older car with a lot of ground clearance to it, from or a lot of gap to it. So it should be interesting to see what it does, and I don't know why it's missing a couple of parts here and there. I think something with the update kind of messed things up. So here we go, just full speed into it. And yeah, that's totally safe. That one is totally safe without any sort of braking, so that's good. With braking, I'm not sure though, because this thing is an even older suspension setup than the Prelude, so it should dip even more because it'll just be more sloppy generally. Like generally suspensions are getting better where they have less play when you brake and stuff so I'm thinking you know it's braking on this one it might dip down a lot. So here we go watching it and brake definitely dropping down and oh perfect. So there is a car you do not want to slow down with because that one will definitely be fatal or at least near fatal it didn't quite go all the way to the driver's head but it looked like it was pretty close close enough where you're gonna smash your head into metal and probably die and I kinda had a poor camera angle on that one so I kinda wanna do it one more time even though I just did it I just didn't really care for that camera angle too much So that was all way unzoomed and stuff. And it was kind of not 100 times slow mo, was it? So it gets the hood a little bit to slow it down, but it still hits the roof and the A pillar pretty hard. That is what actually happens. It's surprising how many cars are like perfect, the perfect height to uh, hit the hood. What the heck is that? It's just a random circle. Maybe it's from the headlights. My best guess is it's that piece from the headlights. Alright, next up, how about the CRX Del Sol? We'll use the stock version for now and maybe poke at the other ones in a second. Gotta get the purple one. And hopefully the game didn't kind of glitch out right there. I think it's okay. Like the other one where it messed up. Del Sol, coasting into it. Coasting is better than accelerating, by the way, if you want to kill yourself. Because when you accelerate, there's a little bit of that front lifting up. And this one, I don't even need to brake. Just coasting is enough to make it where it is a fatal collision, probably. Yep, 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 yep. It's hard to see with all the sparks, but that thing is going into the driver's cabin. As you can see, the driver's cabin right here, yeah, there's metal and sparks everywhere. You're dead. You speed it up just a little bit. It's interesting because the roof isn't actually fully connected to the windshield. It just kind of caves straight down, which might have been a huge flaw in terms of a crash like this because then your head might just slam right into this part right here, which could just cut you open for all I know because after it hits that, it might be at a very awkward angle that's really sharp and you just get your head cut off, the top of your head cut off, cut off or whatever in a really violent fashion. How terrible is that? All right, next up, uh, let's try. Um, I, I I don't know what mods I should really use for this. I'm thinking maybe how about the Impreza? And I don't have the color changer here, so it's gonna be chromed out. Oh, it's just white. I thought it'd be chromed out. Let's see how low can you go? It's like a limbo, but worse. High speed one here. The hood is the savior. It's going to save him. I mean, that was a really high speed crash. We were going at that at like 70 miles per hour. So I expect a little bit of uh, damage to the cabin no matter what. But it um, looks like it'd be okay, especially with the roll cage. That probably helps a lot. I forgot this one had the roll cage. So, yeah, I'm thinking that one would have been iffy. Honestly, it's it's hard to say because I was going so fast. 
Like, I think if I was going slower, it might have been mostly absorbed by the hood. But you know what? That's good. That's good enough for me. Let's go ahead and keep on going on to the next car. How about we use the E30 M3? And this one will be fun because we can get the Stig. So we can really see what happens to the driver's head. I'm always saying, oh, well, this happens. And, you know, I'm guessing. Now we can actually see. And I don't know why the engine sounds don't work. Eh, well. Or the speedometer. Old mods have glitches. It's just the way things are. So here we go. Hopefully this thing actually goes under it to talk about all those things I usually say. I might have to break for it to actually go under. Oh, look. Here we go. Stig's head right into the, the underride guard. Just like I was saying. Your head goes right into it. So anytime it goes into the cabin is almost always going to probably be fatal or severe injuries. And that proves it. Well, it doesn't exactly prove it, but it helps demonstrate my, my point that I'm trying to make most of the time. And you can see just why I would think that'd be fatal. Is you're slamming your head into that solid chunk of metal at really high speeds. That shouldn't be something you'd probably easily survive. He has a helmet, though. So, you know, that probably helps a little bit. I want to do that again, but a little bit of braking this time to see if I can get it to go under the guard for maximum damage. And brakes. This is a M3 though, so it has a pretty stiff suspension set up, but there we go, so right there, boom. You can see just how terrible it is for a driver to be in there. Well, aside from all the sparks everywhere, you can see just how badly he actually slammed into that underride guard. It's just a terrible place to be. Getting crushed by it and simultaneously slamming his head into it is not pleasant. You can see his arm probably would have had some injuries because his arm's like inside of it. Yeah, terrible place to be in. I think it was even worse for the passenger. I think it's a little bit closer to them because I hit it a little crooked, so. Yeah, perfect demonstration right there. I love it. Like, I love that it has the person there so you can sh show it off like that. All right, next, let's use the Chevy Nova. Get the torque thrust on it. I mean, it doesn't really matter in the end, but, you know, torque thrust. It sounds so cool. How do you not use the torque thrust? Come on, come on. Free yourself. Free your mind. And again, this one's going to have a pretty sloppy suspension setup, I would think. So when I brake, it should really dip. So it should make a pretty significant difference between the two. So first off, coasting. And it looks like it's going to sit pretty high, actually. So yeah, no issues there. Aside from the fact that it's an old car, which kind of the whole thing becomes a crumple zone when you crash, uh, it doesn't actually hit the underride guard. So it looks like, aside from the dash kind of exploding everywhere, you shouldn't have any real crazy intrusions into the cabin to cause injuries. Of course, this car probably doesn't have any sort of real safety mechanisms like airbags and all that. So you're still going to get yourself beat up, but it should be survivable, I would think. And now, with braking, and also kind of hitting it at a crooked angle. Just barely tall enough of a hood still to hopefully keep you okay. Not by much, but just barely enough. Next up, we'll use the Cadillac. This is an old mod. This is like one of the first mods I installed. I wonder if it still works. I haven't tried it, actually. Please still work, Caddy. Yeah. And again, this is another old car. I don't know what's up with the tack. This engine's so old, it's like, I can't rev past two. Please don't do it. And I'm, I'm doing it anyways. It also has a soft top, which might be kind of interesting. So just coast. Maybe a little bit of brakes, because it is tall. There's nothing you can do to get that thing to go under that guard. It is a very tall vehicle. And driver, of course, isn't going to have too much serious damage because it hit and there's a, like a nice crumple zone from the front engine compartment. All right, what else do we got? We got the Sport Quattro, but that's kind of a race car, which I, I guess we could do it. Yeah, why not? I don't I don't remember how good this mod is. That's why I installed it, because I couldn't remember. We'll find out. At least see how it does here. It's just, Oh, it's a rally car, though. It's going to sit too high. This thing sits way too... Ooh, but it dips. That suspension dips hard. Wow. That car is definitely one of the ones where you do not want to brake. 
If you break right there, that guard just goes right through it. That uh, is unbelievable. How much that card dipped. That seemed a little uh, unrealistic in terms of how much it dipped. I don't know. I mean, I don't think rally car suspensions are usually uh, that soft. I mean, you'd bottom out every time you break them, it looked like. Like, you see, when we accelerate, it tilts back. If we just coast into it, I think we'll be okay. Coasting, yeah, you'll be a lot better off than braking. And heck, accelerating might be even better because you lean forward or you lean back so much. Uh, that car's kind of iffy. How about the Datsun? We can do uh, the normal version and then we'll also try one of the uh, like race ones which sit lower if necessary. Uh oh, it's going to take a second. I think the game kind of messed up right there. I'm not 100% on that. I don't know, sometimes it seems like when a car takes too long to load out, my recording software just pauses and comes back in. So we're going to slam on the brakes for this one because it looks like it's a truck after all and sits pretty tall. Not quite. Not quite. Drivers are safe. How boring is that? Get the race one which sits lower probably and with the extra lowness, it should decapitate them. How terrible is that? Oh my goodness! <laughs> that thing squats when you accelerate. That's not quite right. I don't think it's supposed to do that. So that means when I brake, it'll also... Oh! Maybe not. Try that again. That was just... I was so, like, going whoa at that rear suspension, I forgot to even really pay attention to what I was doing. So I accelerate gently, otherwise it'll kind of bottom out in the back, and that's not beneficial to me. And then eight times slower, and then brakes. I guess even with the race one, it's okay. So it's not gonna get hit by it, and then... That means Crumple Zones are doing their job. Crown Victoria, I haven't done you yet. Let's use the taxi. It's going to be a red taxi, watch. That would be so weird. Okay, good. Let's go. BNG NDX1 is the taxi's uh, little title thing. So this one, I'm going to do a coast. Coasting, coasting, coasting. Just barely tall enough. I think, yep, it's slowing down. Just barely tall enough to make sure you don't get decapitated. With braking, uh, I wouldn't be so certain of it performing well. I'm thinking with braking, it's going to be very painful. So here we go. Brakes. Is there a little bit of a dip? There's a dip and fatal. I got to get a little more slow-mo on that one. I don't know why I did it in only uh, eight times slow-mo. Sorry about that. Because I, I couldn't exactly see what the underride guard did, but it looked like it was fatal. So here we go. Try number two. We're going to put it on a little more slow-mo this time. So here we go. Actually seeing what happens. And... Maybe not. No, it's fatal, it's fatal, it's fatal. It's going into the cabin. Anytime you see that, it's guaranteed you're going to smash your head into it, probably. So, yeah, that is another car where you want to keep going. And I think that really covers most of the cars I have installed. There's a couple I didn't do, but I did, like, a good variety of vehicles, I feel. I didn't do a lot of high-sitting cars because it's kind of like, oh, it crashed into it normally. I did a lot of the lower cars because I thought they'd be more interesting, and I still feel like they were. So, um, I think that'll do it for this video. If there's enough cars you guys would want to see tested uh, doing the same procedure, I might do a part two. So if you want more cars uh, in particular, feel free to request them. My only requirement is that I've hopefully used them in a video beforehand. Uh, otherwise, until next time, this is YBR. I'll see you.